Welcome County Executive Angela Alsobrooks. She's here today to talk about her candidacy to become Maryland's next senator in this historic race. Hi, County Executive Angela Alsobrooks. Thank you for joining us here today at Democracy Docket for our candidate Q&A series. Well, thank you so much, Courtney, for having me. I really appreciate it. Of course. So first, I just want to start by asking you about the upcoming election. So why are you running for U.S. Senate? How did you come to that decision? Well, you know, I've, I've been in, uh, in service for 27 years, um, started as a domestic violence prosecutor. Um, I've been fighting for our communities, the things that we all want to see in our communities, um, access to affordable housing that's safe, economic opportunity, uh, health care that is affordable for all, uh, and making sure in this moment that we're preserving our democracy and the freedoms uh, that, that all of us uh, have fought for. And so running for Senate really is an extension um, of my desire to better our communities. And in this moment, we're fighting for the future of our country, fighting to have uh, our daughters, like my 19-year-old daughter, um, have the privacy and freedom that she needs um, to be able to make her own health care decisions. We're fighting in this moment. We've seen through many of these decisions on the Supreme Court, we're now actually literally fighting for our democracy, uh, voting rights and freedom. Um, and so this is why I'm running, is because I believe in the future of our country uh, and I believe that those freedoms uh, that we fought for ought to be preserved. Definitely. And, you know, kind of going off of exactly, you know, why you're running and, and what you're looking to achieve, how have you protected democracy thus far in Prince George's County? And, and how do you look to do that as a U.S. senator? Well, you know what part of it, there's, I think, no stronger way to do it in this moment than running for United States Senate, most especially when we realize that Maryland has now been selected as one of the four top states that Mitch McConnell and the Republicans have targeted um, as a place that would give them the opportunity to flip the Senate um, and flip the majority to a party led by Donald Trump that has very intentionally worked to, to undermine the freedoms uh, that we have come to enjoy. Uh, and I'm fighting in this moment uh, to make sure that those freedoms are preserved, fighting to make sure that we have that 51st vote uh, and that we are able um, to not continue to impanel these conservative justices that are doing things like overturning Roe. Uh, we see the, the disturbing uh, decisions that are coming out of the Supreme Court. And so I'm standing up and, and fighting to make sure that, that a woman's right to choose is protected uh, and many of the other freedoms that we, that we deserve. Definitely. And, you know, obviously there have been all these recent Supreme Court decisions, but there also is a court case in Maryland that's impacting democracy. So I wanted to ask you a bit about that. Um, back in March, uh, two right wing groups, Maryland Election Integrity and United Sovereign Americans, um, sued the state um, to gain access to their voter rolls, questioning their voter roll maintenance, and also questioning other election procedures. How do you think that this impacts voters in Maryland going forward and other voting rights cases as well? Well, you know, what you mentioned is, is right about these voting rights cases um, and these efforts to suppress the vote um, are not just limited to Maryland. We unfortunately saw some of this MAGA influence uh, in Maryland where these frivolous cases have been filed. But what we know is that they are being filed all across the country. And again, this is a very concerted effort. It's a very organized effort uh, in Maryland and across the state to suppress the vote. It's the reason we have to lean into uh, to legislation like For the People Act. Uh, we have to really double down and make sure that we're working to pass the John Lewis Voting Rights Act. And we have to do everything we can uh, to continue to preserve our right to vote uh, and to preserve our freedoms. And this is, again, one of the reasons why we must do everything in our power. The stakes couldn't be any higher in this race uh, to make sure that we are uh, preserving the majority, making sure the Democratic Party remains in the majority in the Senate uh, so that we have a firewall to protect these, these freedoms and to have the opportunity uh, to, to further voting rights, uh, freedoms, and, and uh, ability to vote. Definitely. And you actually took me right to my next question. I saw on your website that you emphasize the importance of passing federal voting rights legislation, like you mentioned, the John Lewis Voting Rights Act, the Freedom to Vote Act. Why is that so important and why is that a priority of yours? Oh, it's, you know what? It's core to our democracy. America is, is based on and built on the premise that our democracy is, is secure. We are a leader across the world. Uh, and what we know is the opportunity to go into the voting booth uh, to make your voice heard and known is a fundamental right of every American, and it is right now at risk. 
Uh, and we know it's at risk. We look, for example, at the Supreme Court case yesterday, which is giving immunity um, to the president, saying that, you know what, for so long as you're in, in presidential office and you commit a crime uh, in, in, in your official capacity, a person who tried to, to thwart and overthrow our democracy uh, should be given immunity. This is a scary, scary time. And so the For the People Act, the Voting Rights Act, um, is necessary, unfortunately, in this moment, uh, because there are those who would align with uh, with Donald Trump and others to throw us back generations and to make sure that people are not able to access the vote. You saw it here in Maryland, wanting to throw people off the voter rolls, wanting to create roadblocks here. And it's not just Maryland. Look in Georgia. They want to make it a crime to bring a bottle of water to the voting uh, booth. These are efforts that must be thwarted and must be uh, must be d defended against. Definitely. And you just spoke about the Trump immunity Supreme Court case. Um, can you talk about how that ruling has impacted your strategy going forward? Well, you know, our strategy has been the same as it is to communicate and what is true. It was true before yesterday's um, court case is true today is that this election, the stakes of it could not be any higher. There are two differing visions of what the future of our country looks like. Uh, and I happen to share the vision that all of us should continue to uh, to enjoy the freedoms that we've spoken about, the voting voting rights and, and other freedoms. But we know as well that no person, man, woman, or is, is above the, the law. And what we know is that the Supreme Court that was hacked by Donald Trump and this effort that was started, by the way, by Mitch McConnell, this was started by Mitch McConnell when he blocked President Obama from appointing Merrick Garland. This, this, was, this foundation was laid many, many, it was, late years ago. Uh, and this election is an effort to make sure that we do not continue to impanel these conservative justices who have now undermined um, the public's faith uh, in our Supreme Court, who have these radical decisions. And we must have the 51st vote uh, and we must have the majority held by the Democratic Party. Right. Yeah. Thank you for kind of diving into that and providing your insight. Now I want to ask you, so your Republican opponent, Larry Hogan, was endorsed by Donald Trump. Can you talk about what your perspective on that is and how that impacts the race going forward? I mean, it's very clear. You know, uh, Larry Hogan was selected, handpicked by Mitch McConnell. And when he handpicked him to run in the race, he said that, that it was the get of the year is what he said. Because he believes that Larry Hogan provides for the Republican Party one of the best chances they have to flip the Senate to be held by a Republican majority. Donald Trump came along and endorsed Larry Hogan. Why? Because Larry Hogan, Mitch McConnell, and Donald Trump have a goal that they share. That goal is flipping this Senate seat and, and giving a majority, empowering a caucus, which again is the same caucus that has been uh, in line to, to uh, impanel these conservative justices that overturn Roe. And they are not done yet to, to abridge the reproductive freedoms of women that we've seen through IVF and refusing to vote uh, to secure IVF and contraception uh, as a right that women have. So Larry Hogan, Mitch McConnell, and Donald Trump have that in common. Um, and that is the reason that he absolutely, uh, we cannot allow um, Larry Hogan to have that 51st vote it must it must stop. And again, Mitch McConnell is to blame. You know, he, he also refused to hold Donald Trump accountable uh, on January 6th as a result of his activities. And so we, we have to stop uh, and cannot give any further power to that caucus. Right. And so you mentioned the importance of judges um, it, as a U.S. senator. If the Democrats do have the majority in the Senate, would that be a priority of yours? Making oh, sure. I'm sorry. Yes. You know, it's, it's such a it's absolutely true that we see now that the avenue that has been used to abridge our rights has come through the Supreme Court as well as through local district courts. So I would be uh, really fighting to make sure that we are not confirming more of these conservative justices who are intent uh, on rolling us backwards. But we also have many of the other local courts that the Senate has the opportunity to um, to confirm judges that are doing things like rolling back rights for our LGBTQ community uh, for uh, and, and many other freedoms. And so this is a really, so the courts are on the ballot. The courts are on the ballot. 
Definitely. And kind of going forward, um, obviously, you have a lot of experience as a county executive. Um, you know, what have you seen in local elections and Maryland elections that either you would like to change or stuff that you think um, really makes sure that people's voting rights are being upheld? Well, you know, we Maryland, I'm really fortunate that Maryland is a state that really has leaned into, um, in, in many instances, protecting our rights. This year, we have, for example, um, a, a, a ballot initiative that will help us to decide about codifying in our state constitution a woman's right to choose. This is very important. Um, it is one, when we think about Larry Hogan, uh, who is my opponent, we know that he vetoed important legislation that would have expanded abortion care access in our state. Uh, and when he was overridden by our majority Democratic legislature, he withheld the funding uh, for it. And so we know that um, abortion care is, is not secure um, and that it is necessary to enshrine it in state, in, not only in the state constitution, but we know it is important to make sure that the Women's Health Protection Act is passed, that we can then uh, once again codify in federal law a woman's right to choose, um, and that we have all the protections that will be necessary to secure that right. Yeah, and, and how important are ballot initiatives in promoting democracy and the voices of the people? They are. I mean, you know, we voting in general and these ballot initiatives that give the public the opportunity to be heard, um, to express their their desires and values. And so they're very important. And I also just wanted to ask you as well, as a U.S. senator, you mentioned that federal voting rights legislation is really important. What what are what would your other priorities be related to democracy, voting rights, et cetera? Well, you know, again, it's the um, it's definitely voting rights legislation, John Lewis and the For the People Act, um, and you know, just ensuring that um, that again we have all of our rights uh, preserved. But I'm also going to preserve the right for people to to be able to afford the cost of living. Uh, that means supporting things uh, like what the what President Biden has done through the bipartisan infrastructure bill. Um, continuing to bring back in critical dollars to our state to build bridges and infrastructure and roads to, to attract jobs, uh, making sure that we continue to to protect our climate uh, through the Inflation Reduction Act and this green economy that we're developing. Those are freedoms too. The right to live in a place where you can afford the cost of living, the, the right to live in a place where you have a clean environment, clean air and clean water. Um, these are also rights uh, that, that really do uh, impact the lives of so many. And I'll be uh, fighting against uh, gun violence, also making sure we have sensible gun legislation, the right to live in a place where you are free of violence. You know, in America, the number one killer of children is gun violence, not disease, not car accidents. And so we have a lot to do to make sure we're passing sensible gun legislation also that will take the, the, the assault weapons off our streets and, and ghost guns. Definitely. And now that we've discussed a lot of your priorities, I want to also discuss the unique perspective that you could bring into the Senate. You could be one of the only, if not the only, Black woman in the U.S. Senate. Um, how important is that to you? And what perspective do you feel like you're bringing? Well, you know, I think it's important for, for all of us to look in the Senate and see ourselves of every race, of every gender, and every background. And what I believe that does is allows us to have the kind of policies that are complete. Um, and so it's absolutely important that we have uh, women. It's important that we have black women. It's important that we have women uh, and men of every race and background uh, in that body. And in Maryland, our federal delegation of 10 people does not have any women uh, at all. And so it is an all male delegation. I think it's going to be really important that we elect women uh, who will bring a lived experience that I think is important as mothers and wives and and sisters and daughters, it's going to be especially important as we, and, and informs the legislation that we pass. And I'm excited because this is an opportunity in this election to make that happen. Yes, definitely. Thank you for sharing that. And so I just want to end this interview with kind of a fun question. So I know that you were born and raised in Maryland. So as a fellow Marylander, I have to ask you, what is your favorite food to put Old Bay on? Oh, Old Bay. Well, you know what? It goes well on so many things, but they make potato chips that I have mm -hmm. to tell you are quite delicious with Old Bay on them. Um, you know what? It'd be great. You can also do a little Old Bay on your eggs if you want. Um, there are lots of options for, for Old Bay. You do a little um, a seafood salad. You know, we could just go on and on, right? But I think potato chips. 
old bay <laughs> um, potato chips that it, or French fries. Oh my God, I forgot to tell you that French fries is really very good. Yeah, fries are fries are my favorite. Well, thank you. That's the answer that everyone really wanted to know. So there oh, you go. <laughs> okay, so there you have it. Yeah, exactly. Well, thank you for joining us today at Democracy Docket and taking the time to talk about democracy, voting rights, and and what you're hoping to accomplish in the Senate. Thank you so much, Courtney. Thank you for having me today. Thanks to all your listeners. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you want to stay updated on all things democracy and voting rights, subscribe to our newsletter today and check out our website daily for new articles.